lions in Puget Sound, along with harbor seals, compete for food with the endangered southern resident killer whales. They all love salmon, and the orcas eat almost entirely Chinook salmon, which is also disappearing. It's important to set the stage that this occurs in a very complex ecosystem, and it's a very complex food web. State wildlife commissioners are learning just how complex a food web Puget Sound really is and how killing seals and sea lions might affect that food web. Seals and sea lions consume more Chinook salmon than killer whales and all fisheries. A single seal may eat around 1.4 million juvenile Chinook per month. So how many seals would have to die to make an impact on fish? We want a 25% reduction in the total juvenile sh Chinook consumption by seals. We have to reduce this number of 19,000 seals down to 14,300. If you subtract this number from this number, that's how many we have to remove, 4,700 seals. And we have to annually remove 530 seals per year to keep it at that level. But the problem is salmon also face a slew of other challenges and scientists in Olympia today say they don't know whether killing seals and sea lions will do anything at all. In my opinion, even if the seal consumption were somehow reduced or eliminated, there's no guarantee of a, of a response by the salmon in terms of returning adults. Recently, a dozen sea lions have washed up, shot and killed illegally. Scientists say for legal killing to occur, the federal government would have to approve it. But before that happens, they want more information. Like how many seals and sea lions are there in Puget Sound? When do they eat the most salmon? And if there were less seals and sea lions, would some other predator eat all the salmon anyway? Essentially looks at a wet food web like this and looks at, okay, if I change one thing in this food web, how does it, how does it uh, ripple through the rest of that food web? In Seattle, I'm Allison Morrow.